Hi everyone. In this video I wanted to show you how to create the basic geometry needed to do an energy simulation in topologic energy for Blender. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we have this tower uh, that has uh, thermal zones on the perimeter and one central thermal zone in, in the core, and it has windows, and it has also shading devices. So I got a question about, so how do we uh, create this in Blender very easily? Um, fair warning, uh, I am not a Blender expert. Uh, my expertise is more in 3D Studio Max, but I find a lot of com commonalities between the two pieces of software, so uh, I, can, I can kind of transfer some information. But please excuse any type of slow modeling or awkward modeling that you will see done in Blender. If you know Blender and you know a better way of modeling, by all means, go ahead and, and use that. Uh, but I'm hoping to be able to get you to model this, this building as simply as possible. And then perhaps in the next video, I will show you how to create an energy model out of it in topologic energy. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm using Blender uh, 2.93 on a Windows 10 uh, laptop uh, with an NVIDIA card. Uh, it's not a very fast laptop, so it, it will take a, a bit of time to start. And we will start with the default uh, cube. So I'm going to delete the camera and the light so that they're not in the way. So click on them and click delete. Click on the light and click delete. Now, uh, this cube is uh, two meters by two meters. How do we find that out? There's a little tab here. If you click that, it will open up this panel and it has uh, the item information. So you'll notice that its location is at zero, 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 which is the location of the centroid of the cube. Uh, no rotations, scale is one, and then the dimensions are two meters by two meters by two meters. So let's change those. Uh, I'm gonna make my tower 10 meters by 10 meters. And in terms of height, I'm gonna make it seven floors or seven stories. Um, each one of them, just normally, I'm gonna make it four meters. Uh, so it's going to be uh, 28 meters high. And let's go ahead and zoom out. So you zoom out with the scroll wheel, and the scroll wheel, if you push it and move the mouse, you will be able to move the uh, view and then shift will be able to pan around with the again with the middle mouse with the scroll wheel mouse. Right. So I do not want my building to be like centered like this with half of it being below the XY plane and the negative quadrant. So I want to move it so that the origin is in one corner of the building. So I'm going to move it by half the height, half the width and half the length. So in terms of location here for the X it's going to be five meters y 5 meters, and then uh, 14 meters for the z. So you'll notice that now it is anchored nicely at 0, 0, 0. And therefore, uh, the face that we are looking at here, the bright face, this would be the south side of the building, south facing a facade. Because uh, in topologic energy, uh, the default is that positive y, which is this axis that you see here, for instance, now going up into the top of the screen, positive y is north. So, um, so this is 10 by 10. Let's go ahead and uh, re rename this. So we're going to double click on the word cube, and I'm going to call it perimeter, because that's going to be the perimeter zone. And we need to create a core in the middle, so I'm going to make a copy of this. So I highlight it and say Control C, Control V, and this perimeter object 001, I'm going to rename to Core, and I will uh, change the size of it to be uh, 4 meters by 4 meters, and again, it is located in the middle correctly. In order to better see this, I'm going to turn on what is called X-ray mode, and this is the button here, up on top, so toggle X-ray, and you can see these things maybe a little bit clearer. Now, if you know how to use topologic, you know that we can create a cell complex by, uh, use, by slicing, by using planes, 
or faces that uh, slice another uh, volume or another solid or another cell, as we call it. So I need to create those um, floor slabs, basically, those slicing planes, as we call them. So I'm going to go ahead here under object mode. I'm going to add a mesh, and I'm going to choose plane. Again, this plane is going to be 2 meters by 2 meters and centered around the origin. So I'm going to make it slightly larger than the footprint of this building so that it slices cleanly. So the building is 10 by 10. I will make this perhaps 14 by 14. So I'll change those dimensions to 14 by 14. And I need to also center it in the same location. If you remember, we centered those at 5, 5. So this also needs to be centered at 5, 5 in the X and Y. Now, regarding the Z, we don't need a plane at the very bottom and the very top. We need to put only from kind of the first slice, which occurs at 4 meters. So we're going to put this at 4 meters. Now, to save a bit of time, uh, you know, we could obviously control, copy, control, uh, V, you know, to, to paste it and make some more of it. But uh, let me show you another trick we can do to quickly get this done. Uh, you can click on uh, Modifier Properties here, this spanner, and we can add a modifier, which is an array. And we can unclick Relative Offset and make a constant offset. So let's go ahead and make a constant offset. And we don't want to move it in the X at all, so that will be zero. But in the Z, we need to move it another four meters. So now the new one is uh, offset in the Z by 4 meters, and we need about, we need 6 of those, right? So uh, we can change those numbers to 6, uh, and here we go, uh, 6 slicing planes. Now, there is an issue with this modifier in that when it comes to topologic, uh, it will not recognize the modifier. We don't have any way in topologic to read in modifiers and apply them. So I need to change this into an actual mesh with multiple faces. And the quickest way I could find by just Googling online and like asking people uh, is to export it out to an FBX and bring it back in. So that's what I'm going to do. While it's being selected, I will quickly uh, go ahead and uh, export and export as an FBX file and put it on the desktop for now. As you can see here, I've done it before. So I'll just do it one more time. I'm going to call this slicing planes. And, uh, oh, I need to also, before I say export, I need to click selected objects because I only want to uh, export the selected objects. And uh, I will now uh, delete this and bring it back in from the FBX. So I'm going to import uh, FBX and go to the desktop, find my slicingplanes.fbx file, and import it. And there it is. Great. So now we have the planes that are ready to slice, and we have uh, four more planes to create, and those are the diagonals. If you know about how we create these type of uh, prototypical energy models, they have a perimeter zone and a core zone, but the perimeter zone is divided into four zones by uh, connecting the diagonal plane. So we need a four planes that slice this uh, tower uh, along the diagonal. Now, as I said, uh, I'm not a big expert in uh, Blender modeling, so the way I am doing it is I'm creating one more of those planes and then taking this, the vertices and snapping them to where they need to be. That's how I'm, I'm doing it. Perhaps there is a better way, but uh, for now, I'm going to add a plane I'm going to make this plane slightly larger, maybe like 10 by 10, just so that I can get to um, the uh, vertices. And I'm going to move to uh, edit mode. So from here, from this object mode, I'm going to move to edit mode. And I'm going to choose the vertex select, which is the first button here. And I'm going to turn on snapping here this magnet, and I'm going to change the snapping mode so that it is snapping to vertices, so that I can snap one vertex to another vertex. Great. So it doesn't really matter uh, which vertex you take. You can grab any vertex of this plane, 
click on move and start from the vertex and move it over to where it needs to be. Grab the second vertex, do the same, move it to the other corner, maybe scroll here, change your viewpoint, I mean, excuse me, put that there. Just make sure it is not um, crossing over itself, you know. Make sure it is a clean face like this. So there it is. Um, so what I can do now is go back to object mode and uh, make a copy of this. Uh, move it. Maybe move it to... Uh, where should it move to? Oh, it should move to here. Wait. Oh, no. Here we go. It snapped nicely. And let's go back to edit mode and just fix those vertices because this one should be here. And this one also should be here. There it is. Okay, so we repeat that a couple more times. So object mode, uh, control C, control V, move it to, I have to see it from the other side, I think, here, move it to, come on, oh, where did it go? There we go. No, not working very well. Let's see if I can bring it. Here we go. You brought it in. Just check your work. Let's go to edit mode. Take these vertices and move them to the right location. Okay. One more time. Object mode, Control C, Control V. Move it out of the way a little bit until we can see it clearly. Uh, bring it over to this side. Now go into edit mode. Take this vertex and snap it. Take this vertex and snap it. And we are done. Okay. So let's check, check our work, get out of uh, object mode. All right. So um, let's make sure we don't lose our place. So the first plane, this one, I'm going to change the name of this to uh, slicing plane. So I'm going to call it slicing plane. And uh, this one, I'm going to call it uh, diagonal 001. And this one is diagonal 002. And this one is diagonal 003. And the last one is the diagonal 004. Fantastic. So, um, what we still need to do is we need to do the windows and we need to do some uh, shading uh, devices. So um, we said that, trying to, again, trying to orient myself here. Yeah, this is uh, positive Y. You can see it here from the gizmo is going this way. So what we really need to do is put our shading devices on the south side. So let's go ahead and do that. So. Again, I'm going to do it in a very simple way. Again, I'm going to add another plane. And the plane is going to be dimensioned in the X uh, 10 meters to be exactly the same as the width of the building. And uh, the Y ah, 2 meters is, is fine. Maybe we'll just leave it as that. This is not you know, really realistic. And um, in the X, it should be uh, 5 meters. And in the Y, it should come back out half its width, so half the two meters, which is one meter. So this is going to be minus one meter. And there it is. Uh, again, in the Z, we're going to move that. Uh, maybe I'm going to put it at three meters high so that we can see it. So there it is, 
three meters high and the next one will be uh, four meters uh, uh, offset. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do an add modifier onto it, an array, and we will do a constant offset, uh, zero in the x, uh, four in the z, four meters in the z, so that comes up the correct way. And we will increase the count until we get all our shading devices. So here are our shading devices. Fantastic. So we're going to now take this plane and do the same thing. We're going to export it to FBX. And we're going to call it uh, shading. Shading. And it's a selected object. Uh, let's call it shading plane same as the other one. So shading planes exported and then take this plane, delete it and then bring it in from the FBX file. So shading planes import and there they are back here. Great. 